Hi, I'm Todd Henderson. Today I want to show you how to install these Amp Research Power Steps on the 2016 Colorado and Canyon crew cab models. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're starting on the driver's side. This is the front underneath the vehicle. Uh, we're coming back from the front tire to the very first cross member underneath your rocker panel. Uh, now you got a little hole in that cross member. That hole's not quite big enough, so we need to actually enlarge that to a 1730 seconds. I'm going to use a little bit of touch-up paint uh, just to bring it back and make sure nothing rusts. Now while I'm letting that dry, I'm going to take our drill template uh, from our kit. We're going to set it up right up along the pinch weld and up along the rocker panel. I'm going to take this piece right here to where it's lined up to this hole. So I'm going to bring it back a little bit. Once we've got it completely straight in line with that hole and flush up against the rocker panel, I'm going to clamp that in place on the pinch weld. All right, now from outside the truck, we're going to go ahead and run a pilot hole through the drill template into the pinch weld using a 1 8 inch pilot bit. All right, now we're going to go ahead and remove the template and step up those holes to a 21 64. We're going to install a rivet nut. What we're going to do is we're going to take our kit that we have provided, has a bolt, has a, a washer. We're also going to slide on uh, the anvil. Uh, we've got a little lip that faces towards the rivet nut, and we're going to hand tighten that into place. Now, what you didn't see is I did put a little lubrication on those threads. Uh, now I'm going to insert that into the hole. I'm going to hold on to it with a 9 16 Hold on to the anvil with a 9 16 Next, I'm going to use a 13 millimeter to tighten down that rivet nut. As I tighten it down, it will crush the rivet nut into place. I want to be very careful not to over tighten it uh, because you can actually damage the threads inside. All right, now we've got our support bracket that goes up to that rivet nut that we just installed. Uh, now you're going to notice the hole that's here is just offset a little bit, so we actually want it to be oriented to where it's as close to the frame as possible, as far from the pinch weld as possible. Uh, so we're going to use the provided hardware right into that rivet nut. We're putting it in hand tight for right now. All right, now the bracket that we're going to be using uh, is going to be the motor bracket, so you're going to have this gear come out the side of it. That's how you can differentiate. Uh, so this is a motor linkage bracket. Um, now we've got a couple of threaded holes on the front end of the bracket. Those go up to the holes we drilled in the pinch weld. Uh, and then we've got some holes up at the top that line up to the holes in our supplement bracket up top. We've got a hex head bolt with a washer. It's going to go through the hole in the pinch weld. We'll line that up to a hole in the bracket and get that set in finger tight. Same thing with the other hole. And going into our support plate on the bottom, we're also going to use provided hardware. Also just finger tight for right now. This way we can adjust the brackets until we put on the boards. All right, so now measuring from the rear most bolt on the front bracket uh, back to uh, our template, uh, it should be 29 and a half inches. Actually, it comes out at 29 and three quarters uh, to where that first hole is going to be. And what that does, whenever we set uh, the bracket in place, it just misses uh, this extra thick piece of pinch weld right here. So we're still right in place. It makes it very simple to line up that bracket there. So we're going to go ahead and drill our pinch weld holes exactly like we did before, and then shoot some paint on and protect them. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and grab the idler linkage bracket. Uh, this is going to be the one that does not have the motor attachment to it. Uh, we're going to line up the threaded holes to the holes in our pinch weld, and we're going to go ahead and use the exact same hardware that we used on the front. We're going to go ahead and get that set into place, 
and put in a hand tight. Uh, we're doing this temporarily so we can line up the hole in the back that we need to center punch and drill. All right, now uh, we're going to notice that the, the back end of the bracket has a hole that's lined up directly underneath the cross member. We're going to take and set a center punch right into the middle of it. We're going to go ahead and pop it in place. Okay, now I went ahead and took the bracket back off. That way I can go ahead and drill. Uh, we're going to step this up to a 1730 seconds and then we're going to install a rivet nut after we spray it with some paint to make sure it doesn't rust. Now for our new hole, just like on the front bracket, we're going to go ahead and hit that with some paint so it doesn't rust, then install our rivet nut. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our bracket using the same provided hardware. Right now we're at the front bracket again. We're going to measure out an inch and a half behind the front bracket going towards the rear of the truck. And directly above an inch and a half mark, we're going to mark the pinch weld. We're going to do the same thing uh, to the rear bracket, but we're going to go three inches back past the rear bracket. We're going to go ahead and drill those holes, stepping them up to a 930 seconds. We're going to deburr them and then hit them with some touch-up paint so they don't rust. All right, once the paint's all dry, we're going to go ahead and insert our grommets. Now we are going through three sheets of steel on here, so we're going to have to work that grommet into place. Uh, it's always best to put a little, little, little bit of lubricant on the leading edge of the grommet, uh, something like silicone. It helps it to slip into place. All right, and do the same thing in the front bracket. Now we're going to go ahead and set the boards in place on top of the brackets. We're going to slide the clamp block where it can drop down into the board. Right, we're going to go ahead and line up one of the bolts and just get it loosely threaded into the clamp block. Once we have the board centered on the cab, we're going to go ahead and put all the rest of the bolts in, tighten them down, and then move on to the motor. And we're going to go ahead and tighten down the board to the brackets with 316 Allen wrench. All right, now the motor of the gear is going to go into the housing, uh, and then these holes are going to line up uh, with the pegs on the bracket. Uh, so it's not going to line up completely just yet. What we're going to do is we're going to have to actually move the board up a little bit to where the motor lines up. Now we can use the provided hardware. We're going to do the exact same steps on the passenger side. Thread those in and then tighten them down with a 10 millimeter. Okay, now here's our wire harness. What we're going to do first and foremost before we do anything else, we're going to go ahead and remove the fuse and set it off to the side to reinstall later. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, run this wire harness. We've got the positive that's going to go to the positive, the negative is going to go to the negative terminal, this is going to tuck here. I've already got the harness divided into two sides. Uh, the longer side goes to the passenger side, the shorter side with the purple uh, wires hanging off, that goes to the driver's side. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and follow our instructions uh, and route the wire as shown in the, the, the uh, AMP research instruction sheet. All right, we're going to use a 10 millimeter to loosen up the positive battery terminal. Also be very careful you don't ground out. All right, we're also going to attach to the negative terminal, also using the 10 millimeter. All right, so just to show you real quick how I ran the harness, uh, this is the pigtail going. that's going to go to the brain box. It's going to strap down here. Uh, we're going to run the harness kind of between uh, the battery and this box over here. We're going to uh, go in between. It's going to split off. The driver side portion is going to come up over here, go down below in between uh, the fender well and the inside of the frame. Uh, this side is going over top of uh, your AC lines, kind of in between, run across. And then same thing on the, on the passenger side, it's going to run between the inner fender well um, and, uh, and the inside of the frame. Okay, so this wire harness is going to come down on the driver side. It's going to go above your body mount bolt bracket. We're going to come down. We've got the, the line going to the motor itself, uh, run it, riding over top of that bracket. This is going to be for your first light bank. Coming back, I've got a zip tied to this bracket here. This will be for your second light bank. And just like the driver's side, passenger side harness is coming down. It's going over top of the frame cup, frame bracket. Continues to route down. Goes over top of the bracket uh, for the running board. We've got uh, the light uh, wires, and we've also got 
the wire going to the motor, follows down. I've got it going over top of the uh, body mount bolt here, wired to the bracket on this side, and this will be your wires for your light on uh, the back of the bracket. So I'm going to show you how to install uh, your light banks. Now, all of them are going to install, install the exact same way. Um, I've already put a little bit of silicone on the inside of that grommet. Uh, be very careful not to spray the rocker panel with the silicone. Uh, once we get here, you're just going to work uh, the, the wire harness back and forth uh, so it slides through and does not push that grommet through. Uh, once you get the wire pushed through far enough, then we can go ahead and attach it to the bottom of the rocker panel. Uh, now I've, I've gone ahead and wiped down that rocker panel with some isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol. And I peel off you, uh, the 3M tape protectant. And then bear down, hold it nice and tight for about 10, 15 seconds. And now we can go ahead and attach the wires here. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and install the crimp connectors. Now we're going to use a heat gun to shrink down connectors. Repeat the exact same process for all four LED light banks. All right, now let's go ahead and slide the connector onto the motor. We're going to take and slide the motor housing onto the motor as well. Right. We're going to also make sure we have the weather seal lined up. So it slides into the motor housing cover. Once that's in place, we're going to take our push pins and install those into the motor housing. All right, now we're going to go ahead and attach the brain box. Now we're going to go ahead in the front driver's side uh, sill plate. We're going to go ahead and pull up and back to remove that. We're going to go ahead and pull the carpet back so we can expose a plastic plug in the floorboard. Now I'm going to drill a 930 seconds hole in this plastic piece right here. All right, now we're going to fit our supplied rubber grommet into the hole. All right, now I'm going to take our two purple wires that came from a harness and fish it up through the bottom. I'm going to pull them up nice and slow so that we do not pull the rubber grommet back through the hole. Now we're going to go ahead and attach our purple wires to our OBD2 cable. Uh, now we're going to notice one of the wires has a stripe going through it on the OBD2 and one of the wires here has a stripe going through it. You just want to make sure the stripe wire goes to stripe wire. And we're just going to take about a quarter inch off the tip either side. Now we can use our butt end connectors. Uh, these are a screw on type butt end connector. This is my non-striped wire. I've got my other non-striped wire. And do the same thing with the striped wire. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and attach this to our OBD2 port directly above our parking brake. We're gonna take that cable and run it behind the kick panel bracket. Make sure our wires are all tucked back in there so they're not in anybody's way. Now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the kick panel. We're gonna push these clips back into these holes and line up this uh, to this hole up here and then push down to install it. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the fuse. Well, that concludes the installation. If you have any questions, call the experts. We're here to help you out.